Hello there, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about AWS global infrastructure. We'll understand some of the core concepts of AWS like region, availability zone, and we'll try to understand the scope of different services. Right Now, <clears throat> AWS is a cloud provider and they've got data centers around the world. Any geographic location where they have their data centers, that is called a region, right? Uh, uh, for example, uh, in Asia Pacific, uh, as you can see in the uh, in the map shown here, they have data centers uh, in Australia at Sydney. They have uh, at uh, Singapore, Mumbai, uh, Tokyo, Seoul, uh, Beijing. Right. You also see a green color thing here, which is uh, coming up called Ningxia. Uh, in European Union, you have uh, Ireland, Frankfurt, and London, three already operating. One more is coming up uh, at France, Paris. And we got Sao Paulo, Brazil, then North Virginia, Ohio, and we have uh, Oregon. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, North California and uh, US Gulf Cloud. Uh, there is one more which came up uh, in Canada, Canada Central, right? So these are the different geographic regions in AWS. On these locations, AWS has got its data centers. Now, in any region, there would not be only one data center, and that's really great. That's really great stuff. In any region, there would be minimum two data centers in place, right? Now, uh, what is a uh, uh, what is an availability zone within a region? There will be uh, data centers which will be clustered or there would be one data center but there would be like different data centers would be isolated and uh, would be isolated from each other right so an availability zone represents a data center or a cluster of data centers which are there uh, at one place and two availability zones within a region would be physically isolated from each other uh, they would be isolated in terms of all the supplies uh, whether it is air conditioning cool, uh, cooling electricity anything right but the two availability zones within a region would be connected over a private network which is which is really high speed which means data transfer between two availability zones within a region can be done in a private manner without going to public and can be done really fast okay uh, so uh, that is about a region and availability zone. In every circle, you can see how many availability zones are there. In some of the older regions like North Virginia, you have got five availability zones. Uh, in terms of naming convention, <coughs> everything uh, uh, has got a machine friendly name in the computer world. So for example, North Virginia region is called US hyphen East hyphen one. And the different availability zones within that region are named as US hyphen East hyphen 1A, 1B, etc. in this web to 1E. Okay. In addition to this, there is uh, there are edge locations around the world. Currently, there are 60 plus edge locations, and it is increasing uh, like every month, right? What are the edge locations? These are the points of presence for for AWS uh, CDN uh, service, which is called CloudFront. So, um, if you uh, I'm, I'm sure you would have you would have uh, uh, looked at different uh, CDN services, content delivery network earlier. So AWS also has a CDN service. Uh, the name of the service is CloudFront, and there are 60 plus edge locations around the world. The uh, complete list of all the edge locations is is available on the website and it keeps getting updated every now and then. All right. So moving ahead. Um, one important part here, it's uh, from the high availability perspective, AWS recommends that when you are deploying any solution, for example, you are deploying your servers, you should be deploying it in minimum two availability zones within a region, right? So that in case one availability zone goes down because of some natural disaster, some issue, even in that case, your application continues to run from the other availability zone. Now, there are uh, many of the AWS services which have high availability feature inbuilt, right? So you don't have to worry about that, but for some of the services where you have to architect, for example, things like EC2, RDS, right? You need to you need to choose the option or you need to architect it correctly so that you deploy your solution in minimum two availability zones. <coughs> Moving ahead, uh, uh, on this slide, we are talking about different AWS services and we are trying to understand that uh, what is the scope of a particular service? Now, if you look at the, if you look at 
the EC2 instance. An EC2 instance um, is, is always uh, located in an availability zone, right? When you are launching, you choose that. That's why uh, it is in the first uh, column. The same with the EBS volume. An RDS instance also has the scope of availability zone. What we are trying to understand here is that at what level it exists, right? For example, if you take an S3 bucket, when you create it, you only give region. You do not choose which availability zone. Automatically, whatever you put uh, in an S3 bucket gets replicated across multiple availability zones within a region, right? So uh, also other things which get saved in S3, for example, AMI and snapshot, the scope of these things are also region. Uh, DynamoDB is a regional service, VPC, a VPC exists within a region, whereas the various subnets within a VPC, the scope of that would be only availability zone, right? <coughs> Even elastic file system, though when we create, we create it at region level, but but there is a there is a copy or there is a uh, like a specific endpoint available in every AZ. That's why I've kept it in the availability zone column. The redshift nodes, uh, every node uh, will be there in one availability zone. You can go up to that level. Elastic IPs are are regional level, right? They are not bound to any availability zone. Uh, SQS SNS application services. These services are also regional. Anything which you write in SQS or SNS gets copied to multiple availability zones automatically. Same with the case with DynamoDB. CloudWatch metrics are also regional, right? Uh, uh, sometimes this comes as a question, so you should know that CloudWatch is also a regional service. Same with many other services, even CloudTrail is a, it is a regional service. Then uh, there are a few other services which are global, right? For example, IAM. Now, identity and access management entities like users, groups, roles, these things are global. You create a user, you can operate with that user in any region uh, uh, within AWS, right? Same with the case uh, Route 53. You do not, uh, you do not uh, uh, choose a particular region while creating Route 53 record sets, right? Uh, CloudFront distribution. This is also global. You just go ahead and cre create a CloudFront distribution, and it is just uh, across the. It is it is a global. It is a global thing. Uh, it is not specific to any region. It can be you no. Know, it can pick the. It can pick the origin from any region. That's correct. But as such, the distribution is not specific to any region. Okay, so um, it is important to understand this, guys, uh, uh, so that you don't get confused. Uh, for example, if you if you are trying to access an AMI, it is in one region. You, it would not be accessible uh, in the code of the other region, right? So you need to copy the AMI to the other region. That's why I'm trying to. Uh, just explain uh, this thing to you. In addition to that, one more concept. Let us understand quickly what are service limits. Now, uh, AWS enforces uh, service limits on most of the services, on on every service nearly. It is the number of uh, instances or the number of uh, 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 you know number of uh, services which you can provision. For example, you can go ahead and create maximum of 20 EC2 in a region you can create maximum of five elastic ips in a region of course if you have a requirement and you uh, you want to increase that you can raise a support ticket and increase the service limits right and increase it to a number which you want but why are these uh, limits there in place these are there for two purposes first of all uh, any 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 one person should not be able to go ahead and abuse aws uh, infrastructure right for example somebody uh, goes ahead and just uh, you know um, creates thousands or uh, millions of ec2 instances and just uh, consumes all the capacity that should not happen in addition to that somebody who's totally new should also not uh, should also not go ahead and provision provision a lot of uh, instances or services just by mistake right so that's why there are uh, limits on all the services you can go ahead and look at the current limits um, uh, on the left hand side where you have easy to dashboard above that there's a link which uh, which gives you all the current limits and there are links available to you know to raise support ticket to increase the to increase the limits as well i hope uh, uh, this is uh, understandable uh, if you have any doubts on these things go ahead and please write in the comment section if you like the video, please go ahead uh, and share it with your friends. Subscribe to, to the channel because there are a lot more videos coming up. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.